Simple Trader is starting to come along. So we created our first service, our major index service, so we can retrieve information about the major stock indexes. And then we also created this view model in our WPF application. So we now have some data to display. And what are we waiting for? Let's display it. But before we do that, let's take a look at where our application stands. And the first thing we notice is that this navigation bar is just disgusting. So that's a priority. We need to get that cleaned up a little bit. So let's go ahead and open our navigation bar control and close out this view model for now. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. And the first thing I think I want to do is I want to get a little bit of margin in here. So let's let's add some margin to this top little title thing. And let's just let's just give it 10. Or actually not margin. I want padding. There we go. And that just makes the text have a little bit more space around it. We also want the text to be bigger. So let's go ahead and make it we're going to go with 28 for our headings. And then I also want it to be white. So it stands out a little bit better. And then the same thing for our radio buttons. We want to make those white, but as you can see, there's a lot of things we want to change with these radio buttons. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new resource dictionary here. And I'm going to call it navigation bar. And inside here, we're going to have all of our styles for the navigation bar. And one of the main styles that we really need is we need to restyle this radio button so that it doesn't really have like this button on the side. We want to get rid of that. So let's go into here and we're going to create a new style and we got to give this a name because we don't want every single radio button in our application to look like a navigation bar radio button. So we're going to give this a key of navigation, let's call it nav button and the target type we have to specify this is going to be a radio button so one of the things we need to do is we need to restyle it so that it has a different template because that's really the only way you can get rid of this little circular selection circle so that's what we're going to do we're going to call a setter we're going to set a property, we're going to set the template. And inside here we can specify the value. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So first we need to specify a control template. And the target type again is just going to be a radio button. And then inside here is basically what we want to display. And all I want to display is a grid. And inside this grid we're going to have a text block and the text is going to be whatever content the navigation button has and to get that it's just content now of course there's more that we really want to do with this because this is very unflexible so say if this navigation button had say if we said horizontal alignment equals or horizontal content alignment equals center then it won't do anything because we're not listening to that in our text block. So what we can do to solve that problem is we can just say horizontal alignment equals template binding horizontal content alignment. So of course you're going to have to do this with a lot of the properties for the navigation button. So it can get complicated with all these template bindings that you have to check for and verify throughout your control template. But for now, we're just going to keep it pretty bare bones and we'll come back and handle it if we get any more issues. So let's go ahead and to use this resource dictionary, we're going to have to merge it into our application. And we did that in our app.xaml. So as you can see, we already have common merged in here. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing and merge in the navigation bar. And we should be able to use all of these styles now so let's go ahead and add this nav button style to all of our nav buttons 
So one thing you could do is you could go through here and just say style equals static resource nav button. But I'm actually not going to do that. That's perfectly fine if you do. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to say up here grid.resources. And I'm going to set a new style. And the target type is going to be our radio button. And it's going to be based on the nav button style. So basically what this does is every radio button inside this grid is going to implicitly be a nav button. And the reason it's implicit is because we didn't specify a key. So when you don't specify a key, that means that every single whatever element, whatever target type, will have the style. So as you can see, it is updated up here. And there's a few things that we should change. So, of course, we're going to set the foreground to white. And then we're going to set some padding on here. We're just going to have to play around with it. I'm going to go with, we'll do 10 on left and right and then 5 on the top. And then we're going to have to set the font size as well. We'll set that to we did twenty eight for the heading, so let's go with let's go with eighteen for the nav button. We might want to move these font sizes into the common resource dictionary and maybe do something like small font, medium font, large font, but we're not gonna focus on that right now. We're just gonna we might I don't I don't think that's a big deal. But anyways, we now have these setters, and if we go back to our navigation bar, as you can see, it didn't really add any of the padding, or the, it did add the font size, so it really just didn't add the, the padding. And the reason it didn't do that is because we need to specify that in our text block. So, the padding is going to be a template, ba template binding to this padding. So this text block is going to look at the padding that we set on the nav button. And now if we come back, we can see there's a bunch of padding. Looks pretty good actually, so let's go ahead and run this. And okay, that's that's a lot more respectable. Now, another thing I want to do is I want to have some hover on here. Okay, so I wanted to change colors. So to add a hover effect for our navigation button, what we want to do is we want to create a trigger. And the trigger we're going to create is an event trigger so that we can run an animation whenever whenever an event occurs on our nav button. So the event we want to target is the mouse enter event. So whenever the mouse enters the boundaries of the nav button, it'll run whatever whatever event we create in here. And our event, what we're going to do is we're going to begin a storyboard. And a storyboard is basically just an animation. So inside here, we're going to define the storyboard that we are going to run. And inside the storyboard, what you can do is you can specify all the animations that you want to take place. So we just want a color animation, not using keyframes, just a plain old color animation. And we're going to specify two. And inside here, we need to specify a color. And I'm actually not sure what color we want to do yet. Let's see. Maybe, I forget which one is which. I think brush primary, brush primary, let's see, what is this? I think brush primary one is what we want whenever we enter, or color primary one. And the duration, we can specify duration so it looks a little bit cleaner. And I think for that, I'm just going to do like 0.1 seconds. So it's a little bit quick. You can customize that to be whatever you want. And then we can also specify the target property for this animation. And what we're targeting is the background. But not just the background, because the background is based on a brush. And we're changing a color. So we want to target the background dot color. So before I show one for mouse leave, let's go ahead and run this. 
and I'm gonna hover over and it does nothing why is it doing nothing well that's because we didn't specify our grid to use the background property so we set the background property on our nav button but then our control template doesn't use it so all we have to do is set up a template binding here to the background and it'll read whatever we set as the background in these setters and now if we run it we get a little bit of an issue because it's using the background but by default we didn't even specify a background so we should go ahead and do that and I think I can just I think I have edit and continue enabled so I don't really need to be starting and stopping the application so we're gonna set the default background as brush primary one okay I do have to restart the application that's unfortunate and I want this to be two as well because we're switching the one so now if we run it goes green 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 yay okay now what we need to do is we need to create a mass leave so that's not green forever and all we're going to do is change the event to mouse leave and we're going to go back to color primary 2 so now let's run this and there we go that's awesome okay timeout I don't know if you guys see this but first of all whenever I hover over these there's like this slight little gray gap between this area the header and this nav button and then another thing look at this this is like do you see how like it goes it goes up a little bit like the green goes up I don't know I don't know if it's like this for you guys but I did a little bit of research and one way to fix this is if we come into our, our navigation bar control not the style but the actual control maybe I shouldn't have named them exactly the same but if we go to this grid and we set the edge mode to alias it's much smoother so if that was throwing you guys off that solves it so another thing I want to do with this nav bar is I want it to stay this green color when it's checked so as you can see we leave it goes back to the dark green I wanted to stay this color and to implement to implement this you'd think we would put it in the style that triggers but we're actually not going to be able to because say we'd go in I'll actually show it to you we'd go in we'd hover over this we'd select it and then we would leave and when we leave this mouse leave event would fire and it would go back to the dark green color no matter what even if it's checked so we're gonna have to make sure the checked has precedence over this event trigger and one way to do that is to define the trigger in our control template so we can define some triggers for our control template and inside here we're just gonna have a regular trigger and it's gonna be based on the is checked property of our radio button and whenever this property is true the radio button is checked and we want to do some magic so we're just going to have a setter in here and we're going to set the background to static resource brush primary one so that's the light green color that's what we want when it's selected but we want to set the background of this grid and I'll tell you why in a second but to do that we're going to have to specify a name for the grid and we'll just call it grid main and then inside the setter we can give a target name and we want to target grid main. So the radio button gets checked. Grid main goes to brush primary one. And why is this significant? Well, if the background equals brush primary one, that means it's no longer using the template binding. So if it's not using the template binding, it's not using this background. And that is important because that means whenever the mouse leaves, and this this background goes back to the default dark green it means that the grids background 
or the radio button's background is not going to change to this background. And essentially this setter down here is going to have precedence over these event triggers. So if it's if it, if the radio button is checked, it doesn't matter if you leave and the color changes back to the original. So let's go ahead and check this out. See it in action. So I hover, hover, hover. Everything still works there. I click it and leave and it stays green. I think that's actually all I want to do for styling for the navigation bar for now. Keep in mind you could do a lot more with this, so you could even define a style for your header and put that into the resource dictionary so that you don't have these values here. But I think really all I want to do is put the nav button into the resource dictionary because I mean I can't really imagine putting this directly into this user control. It would just bloat everything. So I like to keep that a little bit separated. But anyways, that's going to wrap up the navigation bar styling. One last thing I want to do is I want to go into this main window and I want to change the title from main window to simple trader because that was just bugging me. And now if we run our application, we have this nice navigation bar and we got the title. And I think that's actually where I'm going to wrap it up for this episode. I think next time we're going to create this home view and get a little bit of content on our screen, start displaying that data from our major index service. So that's going to be exciting. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I hope you guys learned something from this episode. Be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more or leave a comment if you have any questions or criticisms. Thank you.